All right, what's up, everybody? Hey, it's Chris. We're live at the National in Atlantic City. Day number something or other. It's Saturday, and I have one of my favorite guests. First time we've ever been together on my podcast, which we haven't named yet. So for now, it's the Top Shelf Impromptu Podcast. Welcome, my boy, Brody the Kid in the house. What's up, Brody? What's up, CK? Here we are, my friend, at the National. It's been crazy. Very wild. Yeah. So many people. What's some of your favorite things that you've been doing here? I've been filming a lot of videos, but Tops Pack Wars has been pretty fun helping out. Mm -hmm. It's absolute madness. Tops Pack Wars? Yes. Oh, yeah, it gets loud and yeah, true it's, madness if you've ever experienced the podcast. Or the, uh, adults acting like they're kids again. Yep. It's fun to watch. I know. They give you some cool prizes over there and stuff. Yeah, he's got some cool stuff. Some of the Tops National exclusive stuff. So oh, yeah, fun. the Tops Packs. Those yeah. are hot. Man, we should probably rip something, I just realized. This is called the Impromptu Podcast because I do not do research. I do not lay out a plan of what we're going to talk about. We're literally just making this up as we go along. He was walking by, and I grabbed him and said, sit down, let's do this. Isn't that true? That is true. I think, in fact, he had another meeting somewhere because all Brody does at the convention is run around to this booth, that booth. He's on the main stage, and I saw him, and I said, hey, you want to come on the Impromptu Podcast? And he sat down, so here you are. So thanks for doing that. For sure. Got to do it for CK. Yeah, man. So I want to ask you a question that you've probably heard uh, a thousand times over and over again. I'm going to try to phrase it differently here. So what are some of the facets, which means what are some of the things, the items, what the kids today should be doing with regards to collecting? What it, what it, what you want it to mean to them and what you want it to be about? Well, they should be enjoying it more. And I keep hearing and I've seen people talk about it, too, at the National about with some of these breakers, kids want to hustle and grind at the hobby and, like, all this, like, crazy stuff. But you're a kid. You just need to collect. You don't mm -hmm. need to hustle to make money. Like, just collect. That's if you right. want to make money, you can, but it doesn't mean you have to hustle or grind <laughs> all day like some of these breakers are telling you to. Yeah. I wish that people could see your face there. He's, like, passionate about that. Like, just, just open up cards and look at the players and collect them and sort them and trade them. Yeah, have to... Half these breakers probably don't even know anything about sports because they just saw the money intrigued yes. and they so they came. But if sunflower seeds got popular, they would just go with sunflower seeds. Yeah, I want some sunflower seeds. So I have, you know, I have experience here at the booth. We have out, you know, what we call kids packs. Well, they're called kids packs for a reason because kids want the cards. They want the trading cards, right? And and Correct. and it's become about the dollars. Now this is where I get heat on social media or whatever, people watching on their keyboards gonna email me. Yes, I run a business, okay? So when you run a business, there's something you should probably do when you're running a business. Do you know what that would be? Make money. Yes, you have to make money when you're running a business. Do you know why? Because I have a wife, I have two kids. And a house. And a house, and a car payment, and, and vacations every year. So I have to do this thing called make money. In the business, that I'm running. So what that means is there's things that I have for sale that I'm going to sell to people and they're going to give me money. I do not control what the market pricing is on these products. I can't help that a box costs $1,200, $1,500. I can't be a nice guy and say, oh, I'll just sell it to you for 200. I mean, I probably paid a thousand for it myself. So a lot of people don't understand that. But what happens is to your point, is when they open up one of those high-end boxes, that typically means that the hits that are coming out of it, the singles are gonna be worth more money. Correct. Market pricing. So Brody has nothing to do with market pricing. I have nothing to do with market pricing. Also correct. Yeah, so don't, don't yell at us because everything's so expensive, but we have products that are built for what we call the kids because it's a lower price point. And the kids can't always afford to come in here and buy a $1,000 box. When I was growing up, because I'm old, Brody. You know that, right? They're not old. Boxes were like 10 bucks, $25. Packs were a dollar. And you just opened up all the packs. And you looked for your favorite players. Back then, it was Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Bonds and Cal Ripken and stuff. And that was it. There was no like, oh my God, I got a $50,000 card. It didn't happen. It was like maybe... A $50 card, and that was like the most expensive card. Right, yeah, and the hobby's changed so much with that and with all the hype and these high 
entrepreneurs coming in the hobby. It's yeah. changed a lot. Well, I would challenge them, and if they're listening to this impromptu podcast, I would challenge them to open up your books and let's see if you're actually making money. Right. Yeah. That's it's that, a thing that's called a profit. Thing. Right. Yeah. There's a there's a, a program, Brody, a report. It's called P and L, profit and loss. And I'm wondering if a lot of these people run those reports, or if they're just like, ah, I'm breaking nonstop. Well, you got to take a look at what it costs you to run the business. You got to look at what it costs you to do a whole bunch of other things when you're running the business. So I wonder if that's going to catch up at some point and they look at it and go, wow, we're on the air 12 hours a day. We made a couple hundred dollars. I don't know. But that's cool. driving the price up. My point is they're, they're, it's inflating the prices of the product because they need to make uh, profit. Well, what, did the, what did WWE Prism originally come out at? $1,200 or so retail. So- so they're twelve hundred dollars, and now they've gone way down since mm-hmm. then, and it's because the highest selling card was like fifteen thousand. Yeah, and compared to other sports, it's not that much. So that's why they went way down. I mean, it made sense. It there was no reason if you can't pull a card like if, if the highest card was fifteen thousand dollars, why are you going to spend twelve hundred on a box? Which uh, yep, a, a case would be like the same price almost. Well, what happened with that was that was the um, that was the first product that Panini had with WWE. Right. Remember? Yeah. So they had the license. So by the time they got the license, like 90 days later, they already had Prism out. And so there was such excitement. Plus, it was around um, a big event. It was around WrestleMania. Yeah. It came mm-hmm. out WrestleMania yeah. week or the week before or the week after. So that there was a lot of excitement and hype about that. <laughs> yeah. You could just tell it was going to fall down because it... it yeah, it was exciting, like you said. Yep. But there's just there's no way that it could sustain staying at over a thousand dollars. Plus, there's an element of um, supply and demand, so I think there probably was a lot of that WWE print. Oh yeah, I there still was have a some. lot print. There was a lot printed. There's a lot of hobby, and then they made a ton of retail too. There's yeah, a lot of it out there. Yep. So, um, sport wise, what do you collect the most? Like, if you could pick one thing, what are you collecting? Mainly baseball. Yeah, I, mean, I thought I, it was basketball for some reason. I like it's. I like collecting in season more, kind of. Yeah. So whatever's in the season, currently it's baseball. Yeah. Football. I mean, I'll still collect football and basketball, but I like what's in season. I also have been buying some NASCAR here. NASCAR's okay. in season. Oh, NASCAR is. Yeah. Oh, they go to uh, end of the season for. Yeah, I think uh, it ends in a uh, couple months, I think. Yeah. So around football. Around NFL starting time, I think somewhere around there. It is. It's in the fall. Yeah. You got a favorite driver? I used to call them racers, by the way, on the air. <laughs> <laughs> I mine's actually Cole Custer. Okay. He was one of the first autographs I ever pulled, so I've always liked them since then. Cole and Custer. I, I actually because Panini dropped a lot of um, NASCAR cards in their last rewards rundown, I guess you'd say. I picked up his Prism Auto to 10 and his Prism Auto to 5. Nice. Gold and white Prism, so that was kind of fun. I would love to see your collection, Brody. You should have Producer Lady make uh, some content. Or maybe you've already done that. Have you made some content about your personal collection of your favorites and how you display them and where they look like? And Not really, actually. No? Not that much. So how do you display your cards at home? Are you like me? They're just in one of those white boxes, or do you have displays up on the wall or oh, shelves? Or? A lot of white boxes, but then I, <laughs> I have a couple of cases, you know, for a higher end stuff. Yeah. My Mahomes cards and stuff like that. I've, the reason, like, people ask me a lot, what's your favorite card do I have? I mean, I like Star Wars mostly in, yeah. in wrestling, but I like the full size memorabilia because you can display it. And I saw some things on the floor, which is a great idea. You knew it was going to happen because the hobby is exploding. You can, it's like a display that you put on your wall and it holds right. all of your cards. Yeah. Uh, yeah Those are cool. Pretty, yeah, they're cool. I, like, there's one, some that you can, like, put a bunch of PSA cards yes. into. Those are cool, too. Yep. Um, yeah. Nice. So, what's next for uh, Brody the Kid? Well, the National Unwind. I'll have a new episode of my web show, Hobby Life. Yes, show. The Hobby Life. And I'm sure. I don't know what we're going to do for it yet, but I'm, I know for sure that we will have a highlights video of everything from the National, including my mom taking pictures of videos of us doing this podcast. I think you just um, gave up the secret of the producer lady, that it's your mom. I think everybody knew. 
Not everybody. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's her. She's doing great. Hope she's taking some pictures because my whole booth is empty. There's no one here. Well, it was booming yesterday. Let's open something. What should we open? I don't know. It's your booth. Let's see. Go grab that WWE prism. Let's open it. All right. This is the impromptu podcast. This is what happens. Me and Brody, we're going to split that box 50-50. Packs. It's an even number of packs, probably probably 12. 12 packs in there? Huh? Number two. Yeah, in the back. Should be a cutter over there where Carter was. So we're going to open up this box of Prism Wrestling. Brody, I'll give you the honors, man. This is for you. I want you to open it. All right, let's do it. Split up the packs. We get two autographs. These, the, these will be your packs. These will be mine. 20 Prisms, two autos. If you get a better card than me, which will be determined not only by lowest number, but like the dopest card, okay? Doesn't even have to be value. Could be somebody really cool that's not valued a lot, but it's really awesome. You will get an autographed championship belt of Moxley. Ooh, yes, I like John from TriStar. Moxley. Yeah, you get a Moxley autographed championship belt. Okay, split up the packs. Give me right. my packs. What? It, what do we do? Odd and even, or no? Just grab All half right. and half. Mix, mix them up a little bit first, though. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? The CK special. Yeah, do the old C, uh, TSB shuffle. There you go. Like a deck of cards, just shuffle them up and split them. And we'll start ripping. First, you're going to say, rip. Rip. Did I do it right? Three, six. <laughs> Who do you think's going to win, Brock or Roman? Or this is, well, this is before SummerSlam, obviously. What if they were together and they could call it Broman? Bromance. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Super Fractor! Just kidding. <laughs> Raul Mendoza, Liv Morgan. She's champ now, I think, Liv Morgan. Yes, she's the SmackDown. Oh, I got a silver of Gable Stevenson. Oh, that's really... Remember the day, the freaking first week out, that's the card to get. Yeah. I actually... I was just telling you about this earlier. I pulled an auto of him from Revolution Box yesterday. Nice. Yeah, that's good. I got right. the rock. All right, I got a Damian Priest to ni two ninety nine. There we go. I'm... I'm on the start. Look at this. Isn't he hot right now, the Austin Theory? Oh, yeah. He's Mr. Money in the Bank right now. Is this a rookie card? No. He was a he was in, he was was in a rookie on some of the last top sets, I believe. Oh, I think I got I got one of the autos. I got one of the back. Let's see what it is. Which one? You got an auto? See I that? I believe so. I rigged it so Brody would get the autos. Oh, my gosh. No, seriously, what is it? To number to 99, John, John Cena. Cena. Dude, congrats. John Cena autograph. <laughs> let me see it. Let me see it. Well, you definitely win. Yeah, the go, second bro. Three. Number to 99. We need a color blast. In a but yeah, there's a problem with this. What's the problem? This card. I can't see it. Ah ha ha! Oh, you see what I did there? <laughs> yeah. Here, that's yours. Put it on your side. It's going to be right. It's going to be tough to beat. Uh, yeah, you're going to need a color blast because I bet that second auto kind of. Well, be, eh. who could possibly upend the John, John, Roman Reigns? Yeah. If that happens, we're going to have to ask the fo the followers to judge which would be school, better. Maybe. Dolph Ziggler, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. Shinsuke Nakamura! Check him out, brother. Dexter Loomis is actually with NWA now. Hulk Hogan. Oh, I got a shiny Hogan. Ooh, nice. Look at this. Shiny Theory, shiny Hogan. This is your Gable Stevenson. Oh, yeah, that, that one. Put that on your side. I mean, I'll gra gladly keep it. I have a store. I can put it in my shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I got orange or gold. It's, hard, it's too hard to tell. I can't really tell. Hulk Hogan, brother. Have you met Hogan? In, no, in I have not. No? Oh, yeah. My favorite wrestler, Seth freaking Rollins, <laughs> Silver <laughs> Prism. Burn it down! Man, I'm thinking about blowing off the VIP party tonight and coming to your house there, and we're going to watch freaking SummerSlam and get some pizza. Yeah, uh, you should. I, I invited you, man. I know, bro. Delton Benjamin to 99. I literally have to go to this to pick up all those, all those product things. The Undertaker! 
Undertaker. Nice. That was kind of a cool impression. Bobby Thank Lashley, you. the almighty. <laughs> the almighty. Boom. All right, I'm down to my last pack. I ripped kind of quick. Persia. Is she dope? Never heard of her. Naomi, I don't know where she's at. She's probably hanging out with Sasha Banks. Oh, I think I got the second auto, so you're going to need a color blast, I think. Seriously? Yep. Color blasts are hard to get, though. I don't think they're just going to pop out of here, guaranteed. Well, you never know. Ooh, the demon Finn Balor. All right, well, it's good. The other auto was John Cena, because I don't... Kushida. Well, there's two autos, right? Yep, and my, the second auto was oh. Kushida. I don't... Somebody from NXT, I don't know. <laughs> I think you rigged this box that you knew where the packs autos were and you got all the autos. Is that true? No. <laughs> it's like the autos are... Oh, good old Shanky. I'm going to give you that guy. I know you love him oh, so much. Oh, yeah, he's a dancer. Yeah, I love there Shanky. You, go. you love Shanky. I he never likes even... dancing with the New Day, but then Jinder Mahal is like, no, no dancing. We're serious. We want to win. Jinder Mahal. Oh, is Jinder Mahal still doing that same goofy gimmick like he was doing back in the one-man band? No, he, the one-man band with Heath Slater. I know, but they had... He was... Uh, he, Yes, he was the one-man band, but Jinder Mahal was like with them. Well, yeah, but they, they made some other the three-man band. They made some other little crew. <laughs> it was a three-man band. Yeah, it was a three-man band, and then he was like, "All right, I'll be the one-man band." <laughs> Man, I sure wish I could get some autos out of this product. Unless if you see some white color blast, I think you're done, though. Sonia Deville. I feel they're not using her in the proper capacity, or maybe she's hurt. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know. Maybe she's hurt doing all this. GM and or manager stuff. Yeah, it's kind of odd. Sometimes when they do, I think they are true. They're injured. Well, Brody, you just won a uh, a Moxley John autograph Moxley. belt. Oh, look. Oh, you still got a pack. A straggler. Oh, <laughs> not over yet. A straggler. To see what this is. <laughs> there's a, if there's a color blast, OMG. This, it was right. No, it's just something shiny. Oh. I have a question for you. Trivia, impromptu trivia question. What was this guy's finishing move? Rikishi, I literally have no idea. No? Yeah, that's a little... That's, that's too old time that's for old me. That's old time. Uh, his finishing move was called stink face. Wow. And he would throw the guy in the corner, and he would run up and put his buttocks in their face. I think my dad actually bought a Prism Auto when this came out because, I don't know, just because it was one of the cheaper autos. He liked Rikishi? Uh, his kids are... I think this is the Usos' dad. I oh think. yeah, it might be. I think. Yeah. Do you remember Scotty maybe. Too Hotty? Still yep. too old, I think. Wow, Scotty Too Hotty would come out with Rikishi, and he would do this dance, and he would do the worm, so he'd get the crowd all fired up when Scotty Too Hotty came out, and uh, he would just start doing the worm, but he would wait for it. You know what I mean? And the crowd would go nuts, and then he would hit the worm. And everyone would be excited. <laughs> that was Scotty Too Hotty. Blonde, spiked hair, he'd wear a visor. I encourage you to watch some of those old school ones like that, Brody, since you now have the app. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do and that. And you could probably put in Scotty Too Hotty, and there's probably a highlight reel of Scotty Too Hotty. He was one of the first to, like, do crazy dances. Wow, well, that was fun. Impromptu box of Prism Wrestling. Brody gets all the hits, and I'm going to give you all these cards, bro. Well, that was very generous of you. So just take all those bad boys. I appreciate you coming on. Yes, for sure. You're the man. I will see you when we get back home. Trade night's coming up, so let's talk about when we get back home to Chicago land. Yeah, we got trade night August 20th, right? That's my birthday. Is that a Saturday? Yeah. Wow, he's already knowing the calendar. Well. So we're having a CK and Jam and JD birthday special bash. yeah CK birthday bash with Jam and JD and Brody the Kid so you're sharper than me because I honestly and JD laughs at me I'd have to email him again what dates are you coming are you sure he's going to be here on the 20th like I sent it to you and you know you talk to him right yeah he <laughs> DM'd me I think right away when he said he was uh, coming I didn't realize okay so that's dope well guess what honey if you're listening we're having a birthday party at the shop for trade night woo <laughs> anything else to add bro Oh, Carter's calling me. I'm in the middle of a podcast. Come on, Carter. Um, anything else to add? Uh, not much. Is there anything I need to cover that I didn't? I'm going to bring signatures for soldiers on here in a little bit with nice. Eric, Eric Norton. That will be cool. Raising money over there for them. That's it, brother. All right. Congrats on your cards. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time and your busy schedule here at National. For sure. 
at uh, any time for you. See you when we get back home. Yep. Peace out, everybody. Peace out. <laughs>